All right, fam, it is officially time to introduce the newly acquired piece of embellishment equipment that I got into the shop. It's been a long road to get this thing in. Well, actually, no. Once I decided on the machine, it was actually really easy getting it in. Got it here in about a week, which was beautiful. Making the decision, you know, there's a lot of options to go over. Fortunately for me, since I have a YouTube channel, it affords me some interesting negotiation opportunities when I actually do decide on a particular piece of equipment. You should always hit a Twinkie. This particular brand, just, it just seemed like the best choice for me. Okay, just barely. Can you help me lift this real quick? And I'm gonna be learning embroidery from this point moving forward. And the company I decided to go with was none other than Melco. Getting the machine connected to the computer was extremely easy. Ah, look who it is. Hey, Cam, how you doing, bud? Pretty good, man. It's good you to... You know what? Vron, right? Uh, Rob. Rob. R.O.B. Yeah. R.O.B. How's it going, Rob? So this thing will always be facing forward on any, no matter what hoop we're using? Correct. Okay. Gonna lift up. Feel real funky. And yeah, I can feel it's buttoned up against the black piece of black plastic. Perfect. Push it in, click like it in. It. I like it. High five, man, yeah. So now what? Hi, Gigi. What do you think about the embroidery machine? Awesome. Same yeah. thing. So you can see the laser, the outline of, of where it's gonna run. Got it. Right. All right, over here, that one. Yep. Turn it off. Bottom. Oh, look at that, babies. You yeah. say, here you go. Ta da! Olive, will you leave them? Will you leave them alone? I know a lot of you asking yourself, Cam, I thought you was a screen printer. What the heck you doing getting into embroidery? Why you want to do embroidery? And to that I say, because it's awesome. Will you look at all this, man? I, at some point, I'm gonna have to do a serious overhaul of the layout and design of this shop. It's almost like I'm used to working in filth. I'm almost a hoarder, right? So it just, but I got baby in the corner right now, but we're gonna get her out of there. She's not gonna stay there very long. This is a temporary solution. So, you know, it may not be the most aesthetically pleasing, but we're getting the job done. Cry babies with the aesthetics and the baby. Uh, let's just turn this machine on, and what do y'all say we start stitching out my first official embroidery project? It's a personal project, which I think is the right project to start on. While I'm trying to learn the basics of actually stitching out projects on the machine, I do not want to concern myself with the process of learning digitizing. So my plan is to send all of the artwork out to a professional experienced digitizer and then I will run the machine and I'll learn the ins and outs of the machine and then once I understand the mechanics of the machine it'll be a lot easier and I'll understand why I'm doing certain things when it comes to digitizing artwork. The first thing I'm going to do is send this image to the machine. So we come up here to file, I'm going to go machine and load design. That was complicated. The next step is actually to start prepping the, the backer and all this kind of stuff. I don't have the right hoop size, so I'm just using the next size up that will fit the size of this patch because this particular patch is like 5.5 inches. This is the largest like left chest hoop, but this one can only fit about a three and a half inch image. So we're gonna overkill the living hell out of this and we're gonna use this hoop for one patch. I, what do they call this? This is a, I can't remember the name, but it's from Madeira and it's like a wash away backer. This is gonna be the carrying sheet, I guess you would say. And then I'm gonna run a stitch through this and then I'm gonna lay this on top and then we're gonna start running the actual embroidery. This is not the proper fabric to run patches. I have it here and I'm just using this as a tester to try to figure this whole thing out. So I'm laying that in there. So I am gonna tape this off just to ensure tension. Again, probably wrong. I'm gonna have a bunch of people in the comments going, no, nah, don't be a f idiot. But we're doing it anyway. Let's head over to the machine. So I already ran the outline stitch on this. Uh, I just didn't record the audio for it or the video on that thing. Oh, it just got me so irritated. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and run this. So now I know where I need to set my, uh, my actual backing. So I'm gonna set this on there to make sure that it's fully covering up the outline stitch. 
I loaded the design from the computer over to the machine. I mean, I don't know, this is still, this is a very tricky uh, endeavor. I'm, it's very nerve wracking. So here we go. I feel like I probably should have put the backing down and then ran another outline stitch before starting the embroidery job. Maybe not, but I, I just feel like that would have been the safer option. All right, now once that is done, I gotta figure out how to cut that patch out. Mistakes have been made. How am I gonna cut that out? I mean, I guess in this example, I'm just gonna literally be cutting. You know what, I'm gonna go watch a, maybe YouTube has some answers on it. Let's see what YouTube has to offer. Okay. Uh, shout out to Mike over, he's on the YouTube channel, Keep On Creating. He's a, he's a screen printer, he also does embroidery. He's been making videos forever. Be sure to go check out his channel and subscribe. So what he does is he doesn't run the satin stitch on the outside first. He, he runs the inside and then he'll, he'll stop the machine. He, I guess he puts a stop on the machine itself so that he can remove the hoop. And then, but he keeps the underbase layer there and he's cutting the fabric out manually around the edge of the patch. And then he's gonna load the hoop back on and he's gonna run the satin stitch. So that's essentially, that makes sense. That's how you would have to do this, I think. I'm gonna call Mike over at Melco. I could look it up, but this will be way faster, way easier. Mike, this cam. Good, man. I'm, I'm working through some stuff and I just wanted to get a quick tip on something because I'm stuck. I need to figure out how to put a stop. I, I was like looking around and I can't find the stop function. You, do you mean on the design shop or actually in the Melco, um, the OS Flex? Oh, okay, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, okay, I see it to this, yeah, to the side of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there any way to rearrange the, so, because right now I was running the satin stitch first. I think that that's a no-no always, huh? Beautiful. All right, man, yeah, I'm, I'm figuring this out. We're working through it right now. Well, thanks, man, I appreciate it. All right, so we, you actually put the hold in the, um, flex os or whatever it's called but so i need to adjust the sequences in the design shop and then load it to the machine and then that's where i can place the hold so this is fairly straightforward yeah i'm hella insecure about this all right we're gonna start this and hopefully after it runs the outline it will stop on its own let's see dude how's my bobbin doing though you know what i mean it's fine fuck it okay it stopped now we're gonna run this and I guess, okay, let's try the rest of it. Oh, that's easy as pie, man. And I don't know if this is the case, but now that I'm thinking it through, if you start with the inside color patches, I'll bet you that it will help with registration uh, because it's not pinching from the outside because you ran the, the border stitch first. I don't know, it might help with with like pulling, I don't know, maybe, we'll see. We're gonna, we're gonna find that out because what happened here, uh, the tension or something on this, on this piece moved and so the edges ended up pinching together right here and then also this color fell out of registration. So maybe working from the middle with the big patches of color will help alleviate some of that, possibly. Looks like it could end up looking worse. I'm thinking maybe I should have done another stitch uh, what do you call this, a running stitch? I probably should have tacked this down first and then ran the insides. Oops. So it did end up running out of bobbin thread. So let's change this out. Should be good. Okay, and then you can see how it got tied up. See how it got kind of bound up there? I think I need to step this back, so I'm gonna hit step back. I don't know, we might end up getting a thread break here. All right, let's try it. Maybe it wasn't enough, maybe it was too much. I don't really know. Oh yeah, see? Now we're kind of matting over what got jacked up. Looks like the bobbin took. So I threaded that up correctly. There's one little dicky do right here. Now it should stop here. You know what, this one's already pretty jacked up so I am just gonna remove it so I can go cut it in a more comfortable 
situation. If you were gonna do it this way though, you would need a dedicated person sitting here just trimming. This would be tough to do on a large order, I'll tell you right now. All right, there we go. Not bad. Okay, we're gonna load this puppy back up. And in theory, I should be able to just hit start and it should pick up where I left off. Come on, baby. It looks like it stayed in registration. That's all you can ask for right now. On this first attempt, I'll take it. It looks good. Let's, I think this should just peel right out of here because of the type of backer I used. Yeah, buddy. You can see how because the weave is so loose, the satin stitch didn't go around it. It ended up kind of pulling apart from itself. So I'm gonna chalk that up to just a terrible choice of fabric. This is a backing fabric, the white. But overall, man, the patch looks sick. It also, I think I would like to use a little bit of a thicker fabric as the base for this. Uh, I also probably could have made the, the border stitch or the satin stitch a little bit thicker so that it, it had a little more distance to, you know, between the edges so it can suck it in a little bit better. So with what we got here, um, I'm not, this is not good enough, but it does look really good. But for today, we did our first successful stitch out. Now, was it 100% a win? No, we got a ways to go. Uh, it, there are a lot of things you have to consider. What type of backing you're gonna use, all of the different things that go along with learning a new skill like this, uh, which is to be expected. Pretty cool though. Those, those thread colors actually match the color combo pretty damn close. This is huge, dude. I don't, I'm not really sure what I was thinking, <laughs> honestly, but we're gonna run with it. And what I should do is screen print this on the front of the shirt and then just make a, a little something something to go on the sleeve. That would, that's what I should do. The whole reason I got into embroidery was to make patches. I love these things. So this is just where my focus is right now. So I'm gonna put a bunch of effort into just trying to figure out how to make complex patches. But let's wrap this video up. This was just more of my introduction into embroidery uh, and to let y'all know that I got a new machine and I'm gonna be doing a lot more content focused on embroidery. Is there anything else I wanna say? Uh, you guys are the best, man. We'll talk to you. I'm gonna pick this up again tomorrow. I'll start filming it. So the next video on this, on the second part of this will be out soon.